Early this morning, Apple executives took the stage in California to announce the next three major upgrades for their three operating systems, macOS 10, El Capitan, uh, watchOS 2, and iOS 9. Today, we're going to take a look at iOS 9 in specific and talk about the new features you can expect when it debuts this fall. Since its debut, iCloud Drive, aside from being expensive, has been really confusing. Since it had no organized file structure on iOS, it was really hard to know what was in the cloud and what wasn't. But thanks to the latest version of OS 10 and iOS 9, we can find that there is an iCloud Drive app that shows us an organized hierarchy of files that we are used to seeing, so we can know what is in and what isn't in the cloud. We live in a cruel world without ponies and infinite battery life, however the new battery menu in iOS 9 solves some of these problems. There's a new low power mode which essentially reduces the processor performance and network activity so that the battery can be expanded over a longer duration of time. Now there's also a little cool menu that you can tap that will show you background activity on a per app basis so you can see what apps are consuming a lot of juice and you can disable their background activity. Now there's a new widget that is available in the notification center which will show you not just your iPhone's battery but connected Bluetooth devices, including your Apple Watch. Finding that one setting has been a real pain in the butt up until now, but thanks to iOS 9, there is now a contextual search from within the settings app. It looks like Apple got sick of notes being a crappy app. You can now format text, insert doodles, and add images to each of your notes. Of course, they will continue to be synced over iCloud, and you can share them with friends and family. iOS 9 gives the app switch the most drastic change we've seen in years. Gone are the recent contacts that were introduced in iOS 8. The app icons are now on the top instead of the bottom, and the slider moves in the opposite direction. Other than that, it's about the same. The new proactive search, as Apple calls it, is very akin to Google Now. Theoretically, it's very powerful. The phone will begin to observe your habits based on time of day and location and will make according recommendations. For example, who to call, what app to open, what locations are nearby, and news articles. Of course, you can still swipe down to get to your typical search menu. However, to get to this menu, you have to search left, like the good old days. The predictive keyboard introduced in iOS 8 has already been disabled by most, at least that I know. Now in iOS 9, that little nub will finally go away. My favorite part about all of iOS 9, and I know this is silly, is that the keyboard is now case aware and the letters resize accordingly. Android users have been making fun of us for years. Thank goodness it's here iOS 9 teaches Siri some new tricks, like being able to locate photos based on location or time. But that's not the exciting part. Today, Apple introduced a new search API for Siri that third-party developers can finally access. I have a feeling we're getting close. Siri might finally catch up to Google Now. A lot of us always leave our phone on vibrate and thus never use the silent switch. Well, now we can copy a trick from iPad and remap that switch to be a rotation lock switch. In my opinion, it's far, far better. Well, that's all for me. Like this video if you liked it. And as always, stay snazzy.